morning everyone. Um, back in the van. On our anniversary. On our, anniv our wedding anniversary. Um, so today, uh, this has turned up. This is our, oh no, you can't even see that. Our battery to battery charger. So in a minute, I'm gonna have a go at fitting that, uh, which for me is probably the most daunting part of the whole build. Um, I've also done a short video on just how to wire, you know, the basics of wiring things up. Uh, just because when I was looking at how to do it, it was just the simple things like which terminals and, and how you fit them and stuff. Um, so I'll probably put that bit in first and then uh, the battery to battery install at the end. So I'll probably put a little time thing here that tells you when that starts if you don't want to watch the wiring bit. Uh, but Emily's currently painting at the minute. <laughs> Yeah, so she started painting our overhead cupboards. We should have been done before we put them in. Well, I couldn't do it like that. She's loving it. Are you loving it? Immensely. <laughs> um, yeah, so here we go. Right, so this is where all my electrics are going to be, or the bulk of it. And it is the bed is going to be above this. Um, so that's why I want to get this, this wiring done and out of the way so that I haven't got a worry about it too much after the bed is in um, but the batteries are in and connected I did a whole different uh, video on that so I'll stick a link to that in the description um, but yeah once your batteries are in and you've got your fuse box um, I have changed my fuse box because I needed a smaller one um, then it's time to connect everything up so uh, it's really really simple um, it's a bit confusing at first but once you get your head around it basically everything needs to come back to your battery somehow so I've got a positive from the battery going to my fuse box and a negative going back to the battery so I can to complete the circuit for every appliance I can literally run a, a positive to here and a negative to here and that will complete the circuit for that appliance um, I don't know what's going on the sun's pretty bright so I think I'm just gonna look ridiculously white but hey ho uh, so I've ordered quite a bit of um, Cable. So I've got some red two and a half mil and some black two and a half mil because uh, that's what I've run all my lights and everything in. Although I've run that in double insulated cable, which is basically these two inside of another insulation, and then you get two coming out the end. And then I've bought some 1.5 millimeter red and some 1.5 millimeter black. Um, the reason being is because I read that it's best to keep your cable thicknesses the same. So where I need to extend cables for uh, lights and stuff. I'm going to stick with a two and a half mil, and then I've bought some cheap spotlights to go under the cupboards, and they're, well I don't even know if they're one and a half mil, but they're thin, thin cable, so I'm going to use this for connecting those up. Um, but basically, most things you can buy for the van, you know, like these USB sockets, they've just got two terminals on the back. Uh, the switch, I'm just using one-way switches, they've just got two of these um, Blades, these are called blades, so these are female ends. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to focus on my face. Yeah, so that's it. Now, to go to your fuse box, this bit's really simple. It's literally just uh, a grub screw. So, all you need to do is you unscrew that and then your wire you take the screw out you poke the screw through this um what's this a ring terminal and then so the screw goes through the ring terminal back on there and then it just screws on so yeah you need to buy the correct ring terminals for the thickness of your cable so i think they come 0.5 like in size gaps so like 0.5 to 1.5 and then 1.5 to 2.5 or something like that but this is well let me check yeah so 1.5 to 2.5 is one size that's blue uh, and then i bought some smaller ones for when i'm using the thinner wire so yeah they're 0.5 to 1.5 uh, they're basically the same thing they just got a slightly smaller entry hole um but yeah so for my fuse box and for most fuse boxes, i think it is literally just ring terminals so you just need to buy the correct ring terminals for your cables print them on and then screw it into there um, and then to run to your it's gone. there's an empty wire somewhere yes yeah, so this wire is not connected to anything in a minute uh, so for like the switches and your um, 
USB sockets and even our fridge has got these on. Uh, it is literally, you need, you need the female blade terminal, usually, to go onto the male. Uh, and then they just push on like that. Uh, so let's see, and then tools to do it, all you really need is some screwdrivers and I just bought uh, this. So this is a wire cutter, a stripper and a crimper all in one. It was about 20 quid I think from Screwfix or something like that, but it's really easy. So if we open up one of these, so your cable's just gonna be uh, like that. So to get your terminals onto it, you'll need to cut it to length using the wire car, and then you'll need to strip some insulation off. Um, so with these, try and get this way around, it just goes in there, and then these are automatic, so you don't need to do anything with them, you don't need to set them, so you just pop it in there, you squeeze, and then it, that's it, your insulation's off. Uh, so then, I mean, I've cut too much off there really, but then you just twist the end. Uh, this is a two and a half mil cable, so I'd need a two and a half mil terminal or whatever I'm doing. So you just, in there, I don't know if you can see, there's a, there's a hole. You need to feed your cable into that hole, your stripped cable into that hole. That's probably more accurate of uh, the amount of cable you need coming through. Uh, these are insulated terminals, by the way. You can get insulated and non-insulated. So you just poke that through there. And then I will try and show you, but the weight of this cable is not helping. And then on here, you've got all these different settings for uh, in, uh, for crimping, so these ones are all for non-insulated. The insulated crimps, they all use the same one, and it's the one as long as you've got the same colour. So this does blue, red, and yellow. Uh, so this is blue, and then you just put it in there, and then just squeeze it. And then you've got one insulated terminal. And I mean, I'm holding the weight of that cable. It should be nice and solid, so you can't pull that off. And then that is ready to go into your fuse box. So you just take out the grub screw, pop that in, and you fit the blade terminals in exactly the same way. So they, those are exactly the same with the same insulated crimp on, and then you just fit them exactly the same. Uh, so that's basically it really, um, yeah, it's just a lot of you cut all your cables to the right length, run them to where you need to be, um, connect them up. Oh, I do need to, I did make a cock up, I forgot to run a, a cable to the switch and then off to the light for the bedroom light over there, so I've had to put a join in, so for that, so for joining the cable up, I've just used these, I think they're called butt connectors, butt splice connectors or something, and they're basically literally just two crimp crimp terminals uh, so you feed one wire into there and then crimp it and then you feed the other cable into the other end and crimp it and you've got a, a join so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and sort out as much of this mess and get it connected up as I possibly can uh, so basically mine's gonna come it's all here it's all gonna run up through these are all the cables for things like lights that I ran when we did the insulation so that's all behind the the wall um, and then I've got a cable, a cable way through there that comes up the inside of this unit behind this, and then all my uh, all my control panel switches and everything's going to be sighted there. And I've got another one of these with all the switches on to go up there. Uh, but I've done a different video of how I've made these, uh, and if that's done, I'll stick a link for that in the description as well. See, so yeah, I'm going to connect it all up, and then, like I say, I'll get on to when it arrives I'll get on to fitting this Sterling uh, Probat which should be interesting. Right so I have made a start on the Probat. Um, I haven't filmed it all because I'm going to be honest it's been quite stressful and frustrating uh, but basically I'll sh quickly show you where I've got to and then we'll go from there. Um, so this is the unit 
that you'll get in the box. Um, I ordered mine from a company called Simply Split Charge and they did me the whole kit so everything I need is in there. Uh, we'll go through the wiring of that in a minute but basically it's just going to be uh, positive from the battery via a fuse to this uh, and then from this positive out via another fuse to the leisure battery and then I've opted in the manual it recommends that you return your negative back to the starter battery but you can most people just use the chassis but for my 12 volt side I'm not having a chassis ground so I'm just going to return back to the battery I've got enough cable so and I've got to run one cable up here so I might as well run a, a negative back uh, but I'll show you where I've got to so if you own a, a Citroen Relay Peugeot Boxer or Fiat Jakarta you're basically your starter battery is under the well by the passenger footwell so so far I've just run my cables in uh, you have to take up there's like a cover here you take it's just a uh, flathead screwdriver to get that up so there's my I haven't connected it yet it's my positive cut that's going to come in that will connect to the positive of the battery via uh, an 80 amp fuse and then it's running under this matting and down by the door and then this is my negative coming in and that's just going to go straight on the battery terminal and then if we jump outside So basically what I've had to do is I've had to undo the seat bolts to slacken this up and then take off all the plastic trim that's here. It's all just um it's all just screws but some of them are the heads were knackered and whatnot. So this is my negative that you've just seen the other end to by the battery returning out here and then I've put the positive in some conduit so that's red under there and that's returning out there. So now I've done that I'm just gonna see if I can get the plastic covers make sure they're gonna fit and then I'll connect the whole thing up. Right, so um, sorry I haven't filmed most of the actual install but the battery to battery charge is now in um, so I will quickly show you how it's wired up but it was just it was just too stressful to try and film it and fit it we weren't even bloody here uh, to try and uh, film it and fit it at the same time so I'll show you what I've done um, hopefully the wiring will make sense and it, it might help someone right so this is the unit I was going to mount it in a cupboard uh, down by the batteries, but I've decided that I'd rather be able to see it so I know what's going on with it. Um, and then from the unit you've got a positive, uh, which is this one here, and that goes through an 80 amp fuse uh, to the positive terminal on the battery. And then there's a positive coming out, and that positive I've got running in this conduit underneath this matting um, and then it comes out in the corner behind the seat there um, to be honest running all the cables under the matting and through the doorway was the worst part uh, which I helped for did you? oh you did help yeah, yeah did, you yeah. did help um, and then you've got uh, a negative coming from the unit uh, to the negative terminal on the start battery and then you've got another negative coming from the start battery which goes to the leisure battery so again that's running underneath this matting down through this footwell of the door and then it comes out here excuse the mess it's got to be tidied so i've got a positive the positive coming from the unit and the negative coming from the battery and then they run all the way along the length of the van and then eventually they come through this cupboard into our cableway that's a bit of a bird's nest at the minute and then that positive comes through another 80 amp fuse um, and then down to the positive on the leisure batteries and then the negative is running along here and into the negative of the leisure batteries um, I was going to put a ignition switch in ignition control on it because I thought we had Euro 6 but after some conversations with Citroen yesterday Turns out I've only got Euro 5. Um, so I didn't need to do that, which was a bonus. Right, so I thought I'd better show you it running. Uh, so if I start the engine, uh, well, I would if I had the key. So once you start the engine, it will uh, sense that there's a 
voltage higher than, I can't remember what the kicking voltage is, 13 point something. So it fires up. Um, the very first time you install it, you'll need to set it for your battery type. Uh, so down this left hand uh, column here, there's all the different battery types, but you'll need to check uh, your battery specs. So either on your data sheet that comes with the batteries or bring the manufacturer, it will tell you what you need. So my batteries, for example, are AGM. And then to determine whether I wanted AGM1 or AGM2, the ideal bulk charge uh, voltage for my batteries is 14.6 and uh, float charge I think was like between 13.5 and 13.8 or something. Uh, so then in the manual that comes with it, uh, it will tell you, there's like a little table somewhere that tells you um, what's it. So these are all the different settings. Um, I've gone for AGM2 because the bulk charge voltage is 14.6 and the float is 13.7. So for me I needed between 14.1 and 14.6 and 13.5 and 13.8 so that's the best one for me. AGM1 probably would have been uh, on the low side. So yeah, and then you could, so you might not just pick which battery type, you're just better off, in my opinion, looking at the voltage that it's gonna give you. Um, and then where it gets a little bit confusing for me is once it's on, you then ignore that uh, battery type. Basically this uh, side is giving you the input voltage, so what the start battery is giving this. And then this side gives you the output voltage, so what's going off to your battery. So at the minute I'm getting between 13.8 and 14.2 from the, from the engine battery and it's sending 14.6 volts down to my uh, auxiliary batteries um, and then here it tells you what it's doing so bulk so 14.6 is right for what my batteries are doing uh, so that's it really it's pretty simple um, I have gone out we went out for about an hour uh, to test it it did uh, drop down to absorption but it never went down to uh, float so I don't know what it outputs at float but it should be 13 point whatever um, and then when you turn the engine off, don't panic because what will happen is it stays on. Uh, so that will stay on and it's the default setting is four minutes it stays on for. So I'll probably change that to like uh, one minute or two minutes or something. Uh, but as you can see now the input voltage on the left has dropped right down to like 12.6 or something. Uh, but it's still giving my batteries 14.6. So we'll have to look at maybe changing that, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's it really, pretty simple. There is a temperature sensor, which I haven't fitted either, just because it means running another cable through, but maybe when I've got more time I might put that on. Um, but yeah, that's it really. Emily's busy away painting. You still loving it? Yep. Yeah? Always. Um, so yeah, with the... I know that, that whole video really is just a bit of a hash together thing um but you never know someone might find it useful but um i'm sure they will i'm sure they will they will right yeah yeah sarcastic cow. um but yeah thanks for watching um don't forget to like and subscribe and um we'll see you next time